The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Hey there, Keith from makingrealestatefun.com and today we're in Downers Grove. We're actually at the house that I'm listed for sale. We've lived here for about 20 years and it's time to downsize. So what we decided to do was, speaking of downsizing, we wanted to talk about first time home buying. So when Taji gets here, we're gonna go to the backyard, we're gonna enjoy the afternoon and we're gonna give you some great tips about first time home buying. Hope you enjoy it. So when we're going through and you're doing a walkthrough as a first time buyer and you're checking out the house, you're checking out all of the mechanicals and all of that. So we're in the utility room now where you have your furnace and water heater. So you want to make sure when you're going through these properties that you take a look at, you know, look at the age of the water heater. These usually have an age of about, you know, 10 to 15 years is their lifespan. So if anything longer than that, um, you know, it's at the end or past the, the end of its lifespan, so you want to look at start look at replacing that. Um, but this one here is nice. Um, you can usually somewhere on the unit it'll have a um, I don't know, it'll kind of like a what am I trying to say here? Um, it'll have a model number and it will have you know the information about when the unit was manufactured. And they place it on different places all the time, but this one here is down at the bottom and it lets you know that this unit was manufactured in 2006 and they probably installed it, you know, either that year or the next year. So, you know, 2007 probably was when this was installed and so you know that it's about 10, you know, 11 years old. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah. So look at it, make sure. Maybe it's right there. <laughs> well, a lot of times, you know, somebody that will service it will start writing dates and things on it too, so you don't necessarily know if this is the install date or the date that it's been serviced and all that. So it's usually good to look at the, the actual sticker on the unit so you'll know exactly what. Um, and then with your furnace, so this furnace looks great. A lot of this, uh, the mechanicals here, a lot of the piping um, or the ventilation looks newer, which is a good sign that the owner t is taking care of the property and all that. But just like with your water heater on a furnace, there's usually a sticker that lets you know when the unit was manufactured. Looks like this one was manufactured in 2016, so a couple years old, which is awesome. Um, you want to check out the filter if you can, and you can usually see from the filter if you know the owner has been maintaining it. If, if you get a filter and the filter is super dirty and dusty, then it's a good sign that maybe the owner wasn't maintaining it as much as they could have or should have. So these are kind of things you want to look for when you're in your utility room. Um, another great thing to check out uh, when you're in a home is checking the, the water or checking the pressure. So four of the main things that could be costly repairs in a house are anything dealing with you know, electrical, anything dealing with roofing, anything dealing with foundation, and anything dealing with plumbing. So it's always good to check the pressure of the water. Um, check to see how quickly it gets hot or if it gets hot at all. Um, those are things that you definitely want to check when you are doing a walk around. One of the other things that you need to know is you need GFI outlets anytime you're near water. So if when you're buying a home, you're going to see some that don't have it, and that's something you're going to want to get corrected by the seller. Um, when you reach the point where you've you know, found a house and this is the house that you're going to go with, you're going to have an inspection or you're going to want to have an inspection. Your home inspector is going to go through the home and, and point out anything that could be potential issues or anything that are existing issues. And a lot of times they'll point out whether or not your electrical outlets or receptacles are compliant with whatever the codes are for. So we're in a finished basement right now. And although it's a finished basement, Sometimes you smell a little moisture in the air. 
and that's very common. That doesn't mean that there's issues or problems, but many basements have a dehumidifier, and that is strongly suggested here in the Midwest because it's so humid outside that you want to make sure you get all the water out of the air with the dehumidifier. So that's a quick tip for you. If you're going to get a house, make sure you get a dehumidifier with a basement. So another thing you want to check for when you're doing a walkthrough in a house is you want to check for when you're in the basement. Um, the walls that are on the exterior side of the ha you know, exterior portion of the house, you want to look at the baseboards, the bottoms of the walls to see if there's any evidence of moisture or any evidence of water because you know it's great when you have a finished basement but what you can't see is behind the walls if there's any cracks or any seepage you're not able to see that unless you see that evidence down at the bottom this house is awesome because there is no evidence of any moisture or seepage uh, down at the bottoms of your your walls here so that's one other thing that you want to check for. one of the other things you might want to look at is the ceiling now ceiling tiles will, will show moisture if there was any problems. As you can see this house has no moisture problems, no leakage because there are no stains at all. If there was a stain, it doesn't mean that there's an issue now, it might have been at one time. So when you're doing your initial walkthrough, you know, the average person when they open up these panels don't know what they're looking at so you want to look and make sure that you know there's nothing crazy looking in here um, you know no wires that shouldn't be there you know it should look basically just like this it should look nice clean it should be labeled properly you know all of that um, but when you come back once you've chosen a house and you look through this with an inspector an inspector is going to take off the screws and pull the face off of the panel and he's going to look behind there and make sure that there's no double taps um, make sure that you know the, the electrical is wired properly and, and all of that um, so you want to make sure that you know you definitely get that done that's part of the importance of making sure that you have a great home inspector when you choose a home and you're doing your your home inspection so one of the last things we want to mention to you is when you're coming up to a neighborhood and you're looking at the house, you want to look at your neighbors. You want to look at the neighbor's house and see what it looks like. Do they take care of it? Do they have stuff all over the lawn? Uh, these are the kind of things that really help your neighborhood values. And it's important because value, value, value is coming to you and not to somebody else. We talked about resale value a little bit earlier, and you know, to Keith's point, you know, it's a big help to be able to look out and see, you know, what your neighbors' yards are looking like, you know, what the back of their homes are looking like, um, and you know, just making sure that the upkeep is there, and you know, people are taking care of their properties because if your neighbors are not taking care of the properties, it doesn't matter how much you take care of yours, but it's going to, you know, decrease your value if your neighbors are not taking care of their properties. So. so these are some quick tips, some little information about first time home buying. If you're in the Downers Grove, Lombard, Western suburbs in Chicago, in August we're having a first time home buyer seminar. You can go online to makingrealestatefund.com. You can get all the information and the registration right there. So we appreciate you guys enjoying this, getting a little information from here, you can check us out on makingrealestatefund.com. You can go to YouTube, and you can also go to SoundCloud. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week, and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com, and visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.